Okay, welcome to the WTF Divorce Podcast. Today we are lucky to be joined by Lauren Dolan. Lauren is a divorce wellness coach. Thanks for being here today, Lauren. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. Excited to be here. We've been getting a lot of questions on our Instagram, and we've kind of lined up. Uh, I think we've got five for you, so yeah. how about we hop right into it? Sure, let's do it. All right, first question we have. What do I tell our young kids about why we got divorced? Yes, this is a good one. Um, when I was going through my separation, my kids were, oh gosh, let me do the math really quick. I think my youngest was one, almost two. So when I realized my marriage was heading towards <laughs> falling apart, heading towards counseling, separation, I mean, my baby was three months old. So we had gone through a lot of counseling. Obviously, it didn't end up working out. So by the time everything was finalized, I think she was like one or two. Um, and I have three children. So she, uh, I think it was about one, three, and five at the time when I got divorced. So I can speak to this question very well. And I will say, yes, age has plays a factor into what you relate to your children, especially when they're younger. Just keep it high level. Just what I said, if anyone's take my advice, I just said, you know, your daddy and I just realized we are just better friends than married. We still love you. Um, we are still your parents and, but we're just better friends and we get along better when we live separately. And I will also say if you and if you're, you and your ex can be on the same page, that helps if your messaging is aligned. So then there's no questions. The kids aren't trying to like fill in the gaps on their own. Um, but we just always kept it very positive. Even though we had issues towards one another, we didn't let the children see that. And yeah, I just, I kind of just left it as that, like we were better as friends, um, you know, and they saw us fight a little bit. And so I would just say, you know, it's, we're happier when we're living apart. We don't, you know, you won't see any fighting or anything like that. Um, and, you know, watch your tone and your inflection and your voice, everything, all of that comes into factor when you're talking to the kids. Regardless of your, your separated or divorced for a reason, obviously there's going to be hostile <laughs> emotions uh, towards one another, but the children most likely aren't seeing that. Like they see you as their mother, as their father, however the situation is. Um, so I just want to keep that. I was cognizant of keeping that just as pure as possible for the children. So they're especially at a younger age. So they're not left to, oh, mommy's the bad person. Daddy's the bad person. I should not love this person. Like they don't need that. You know, they just let them love each one another, you know, individually um, as their parents and then just keep your issues between you and your ex or a counselor. <laughs> yeah, that is. A, and let me say, that's a tough conversation. A lot of times it's me, it's the parents crying, not even the kids, because they yeah. don't fully process it. It sounds like you were able to get on the same page with your spouse at the time yeah. about this conversation. Yeah. A lot of times we have one person that has done a little more research. Maybe it's the person that planned the divorce or initiated it. How do you present that conversation to your partner about yeah. having this? Talk? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I will say without getting in, into any details, um, I will just say that the divorce came as a shock to me. <laughs> um, so I was that person who was like, wait, what's happening? Um, but again, I just, we went into it with, let's just keep this as positive as possible for the children. Again, because especially they were so young that they wouldn't understand things anyway if we sat them down, you know, and talked to them. I mean, they were so young. Um, so before any conversation that he and I had with the children, we would get together, whether it was in person or a phone conversation and just say like, like, I mean, it was almost like a business meeting. Like, okay, these are the notes. Are we aligned? Let's go into that. And if there's not something that we agree on, agree on you and I can talk about that, but let's just at least keep this messaging clear for the kids, you know, these are the points we're going to talk about. We're going to keep it positive. You know, if you are still emotional, if the feelings are still so raw, like get those tears out, not in front of the kids would be my advice at first. I mean, it's okay for them to see some emotion, you know, but for me, it was just like, let me stay strong for my kids. Cause I didn't want to scare them. You know, I didn't want them to worry. You know, I was working through it on my own or with, you know, my ex at the time, spouse at the time. Um, so I say, if you can, I know there's definitely difficult situations where you just can't stand one another. You don't want to even be in the same room as each other. How can I absolutely have a conversation with this person? <laughs> I hate what they did to me. Uh, but if you can just 
for lack of better terms, suck it up and say, let's just put our kids first. And if say how, say those words to your soon to be ex. Like, I know we have issues. Clearly we're getting a divorce, but let's just suck it up and put the, our best foot forward for our kids. So they're not, you know, consumed by what we're going through. Let's just keep their lives as hopefully as normal as, and positive as possible. And then we can work out our stuff on the back end. So try to get aligned before those conversations happen. So you are on the same page and, you know, one person is saying something that the other person's shocked by. Right. And so we're talking about with young kids. I'm sure you've had clients with teenagers, kids that are a little older, maybe more emotional. Maybe they know a little more. Any tips for talking to your teenager or older kids about why yeah. you're getting a divorce? Yeah, they, you can give a little bit more information as well to them. They understand a little bit more. Um, you know, it's one of those things too, though. It's the way I view it again still is how do you want your children to look at that, at your ex, you know, at the other parent? And it might be so easy for you to have that slip of tongue and be like, oh, well, your father did that, you know? So I always just say, just always keep your kids the first and is your first focus, you know, regardless of the age. Um, because even if they're 16 or 18, you know, they're, that's still their parent. And so if they love their children, you know, again, your issues were between each other. You know, if they're a phenomenal father, mother, um, you know, just still keep that relationship as pure as possible. Um, you can say things like maybe like, you know, you're, yes, we did some things that hurt each other in the marriage. Um, you know, but this is how I learned from it and this is how I grew and this, maybe this is how I'm now setting new boundaries. Cause especially if you have older children and maybe they're starting to date, you know, you can have those conversations like I had witnessed this or, you know, your, your dad and I had, you know, gone through this situation and I didn't like how it made me feel. And I want you to be cognizant of how it makes you feel. And this is what I did to kind of, these are the words I use, or these are the boundaries I use to kind of protect me from, you know, holding certain standards. So maybe language like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one thing I've taken from coaches like you is you're, you're probably not going to have all the answers. So maybe have one or two that you can fall yeah. back on. But the key is listening, just let them talk, really just throw it back to them. Because deep down, that's really they'd want to be seen and heard. So if you yeah. can just sit there, listen, nod, that's a that's always a good way to fall back on. Absolutely. And ask questions. You know, if they come to you and ask something, it's like, why? Why do you ask that? Or what makes you think that? And then again, just keep mm -hmm. them talking. Next question. How do I move on without feeling bad that I'm making my life better? Yeah, and this is this is interesting too because it's I'm wondering who like who wrote this? Were you on the one who prompted the divorce or not, you know? Um so I think for me I view divorce as I had once said something I'm like you're divorced not dead. You know, divorce can consume you and it can suck you down. <laughs> And, but it's like, you know what? I'm divorced, but I'm not dead. Like, let me live my life to the fullest. So whether you're the one who prompted the divorce or not, whether you were shocked by it or whatever your, your situation was, um, this is almost like a second chance. You know, it's, it's okay. It's okay to live your life for you. You know, sometimes like for me, I was married kind of young. I was mid twenties. I had three children. Um, I kind of just, you know, followed in line to what I thought was the next right step in life. And then divorce happened un unbeknownst. I was like, not obviously not part of my plan. And then, so it was just like, I took a step back. Like, how can I make this work for me? You know? And, and it's that line that a lot of us always hear, like, it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. So if you can, you know, release that victim mindset, it's like, okay, it's not happening to me, but it's happening for me. What can I do? And so I think there's no fault in really making this life, as good as you want it, you know, especially when children are involved, because your kids will be watching you, you know, and they're going to see you thrive. So if you're focused on thriving and living your best life, you know, and your kids are witnessing that like, oh, wow, this happened, especially as they get older and they realize what divorce is. And they'll probably see situations where it wasn't that positive for some families and they can see, wow, like my mom, my dad, like they went through this, but they're so happy and they're traveling or they're pursuing this new career, or, you know, taking care of themselves. Um, I think there's definitely no fault in that. So just coming from that mindset, you know, and as long as it's healthy, 
<laughs> um, you're living your life, you're having a healthier life for yourself and your kids, you know, again, keeping them in the forefront of all of it. Um, I think they'll see that. Um, and I will say too, one thing that I just thought of was um, when my, so I have 50, 50 with my kids. And so then when they're not with me, I did have a little bit of this guilt, like, God, I, I'm kind of enjoying my time, but I don't want my kids to like think that. <laughs> and so I will say like something that helped me is I almost kind of downplayed like my new adventures. You know, if I was traveling, you know, taking a trip with friends or something for a weekend away, I didn't really gouge all the details, you know, I was just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just out, you know, with, you know, my friend or whatever. Um, Cause I didn't want them to feel like they're missing out. Granted, we did a lot of things together as well, but so that was one thing. Cause that I did have a little bit of that too. Like, God, I feel like I'm finding myself again and like having fun. Um, with my kids and without. So when I was without my kids, I did kind of downplay some of it because I didn't want them to feel like they were missing out on anything. So I don't know if that'll help anyone going through this. Yeah. And when I read the question too, I think a lot of people, when you first get divorced, these feelings, they're almost unavoidable. Like you're, there is kind of a, it's going to get a little bit worse before it gets better. Yeah. So knowing that, uh, is important that like this is a long term investment. Like oh, you said, wow. this is this is your life, and the first six months are are probably going to be a little rocky. Yeah. And the other piece is that usually, especially if the marriage look and ended, ended in divorce, the marriage was not going that great. Yeah. There's almost always a lot of this kind of codependent tendencies by at least one person in the marriage. So you're almost having to unwire yourself from that feeling bad, these feelings of worrying about this other person, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I only have to worry about me and the kids now. That's yeah. it's kind of disorienting in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, if you're having good moments though, enjoy them because like you just said, Rob, I mean, it gets worse before it gets better. But then, I mean, it's like a roller coaster. Then there are times where it's like, oh my gosh, I thought I was over the bad, <laughs> the hard parts and you're sucked right back down. So it's, you know, it's enjoy the moments when they're good. Um, and then also, work to um, create the tools. And that's what I do it's like through wellness coaching too, to when times are bad, you know what to do to rebound quicker as well. Yes, absolutely. Why working with a coach and learning is very important. Cause I always say this is like you're, you're starting kindergarten. A lot of times after divorce, you got a lot of new skills that you have to learn. It's all new. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next question from somebody asked, what are some actual steps to letting go? Yeah. So for me, um, a lot, what I coach on too is, I mean, it's, I'm a wellness coach. And so I think a lot of it is just working on your yourself, working on your own wellness, your own well-being, your mindset. Um, what I see a lot of times too is when people can't let go, they're so still, I mean, kind of like what you just said, you know, you were married for how many, whatever amount of time. And there's that not codependency, but you're just used to being with somebody else. And so when you're not, you're still like, well, what are they doing? What, what, are, you know, what, 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 and you're checking social media or, you know, follow or asking friends, or if you're in a mutual group, you know, hearing what, oh, well, I just ran into so-and-so and, oh, I think they're dating. And I saw and and they get consumed by that. Well, how are they doing it? And it's like, you kind of almost just have to rip the band. Yes, yeah, there will be some time of that, you know, especially in early on, you're questioning like, well, how are they moving on or what are they doing? But if you just focus on your life, like, okay, we're done. Um, that's their life. That's great. And wish them all, but nothing but happiness and just work to find your own happiness. And I think when you really work on yourself internally and find, take the time to realize what makes you happy, that will help you let go and move on and move on with confidence and positivity. And so, you know, just starting with what brings you joy, you know, and I'm a big proponent of working out and movement and nutrition. Um, that's what propelled me through my separation divorce. Um, so finding, you know, a new community, whether, you know, is that a gym or some neighborhood, you know, community, um, divorce communities <laughs> and find something that can help you move forward in the right direction rather than being in a crowd that like pulls you down. Cause we all know there's those that exist too. And you around, maybe it's existing friend group and they just, 
they constantly just talk in circles. And if you stay in that circle, that's where you'll stay. But if you force, if you be mindful of like, no, I respect them, but I need to change. I need to shift um, and find something new that brings you joy that can help you know, help you move on and let go kind of of that, you know, what if, or what are they doing? Um, so I'm a big proponent of, you know, working out, moving your body. So steps for moving on. I mean, like day one, put on your phone, you know, or wake up. I'm a big proponent of gratitude journaling as well. Get up, just put your mind where you want it to be. Not so much the past, but where you want to go forward. Like, what are you grateful for in the moment? What are you having to look forward to? Like, what are three things that you can do today that will make today a success that will bring you joy, you know, and do those three things. And then you're constantly forward thinking and then maybe put on your earbuds, go for a walk, listen to a podcast or a self-development book on audible, take a walk in the neighborhood, um, clear that energy, clear your mindset, line up some plans with friends or community or, you know, another like workout environment or something like that. So just keep moving forward, let go of the past. I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but when you, when you put in the steps and work with a coach, you'll get there sooner. Um, but yeah, I think the steps would be start with gratitude, some kind of movement and maybe shift, um, find some new community groups too, that will help, you know, allow you to move forward rather than stay, stay stuck. Yes. Small steps, you know, get some yeah. small wins that walk around the block yeah, is like so actually really powerful. I constantly remind myself when I'm sitting in it, just get outside, walk around the block, listen yeah. to music. That's enough to at least change your, change your state. Absolutely. Uh, one little thing that you mentioned that I'll add the social media checking, that's a <laughs> new dynamic, you know, for 15 years ago, we never had any of this. I suggest, even though it's painful for a lot of people and it feels, you feel bad about it, a unfollow or a block even block. It, it seems like an extreme thing but your brain just cannot take mm -hmm. all that in even if it's like a nice picture of your ex like you know on vacation it gets your head spinning so at least for a little while i always recommend you know just just do an unfollow and yeah. talk to them in real life how we did forever yep I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And it may take some time to get there, but eventually you'll get there. And yeah. And that goes right. for like family members as well. It's that, you know, the ex-in-laws, you know, if you need to do that too, like go a few more steps to, to unfriend and just, yeah, right. eliminate that. Yeah. It's taking about care of yourself, not necessarily yeah. worrying about other people. Yep. Okay. Next question we got. I don't miss my marriage, but I miss companionship. Dating is rough. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, this again, I mean, I, I'm, I kind of, I'm keep saying some similar things over and over again. Um, I get it. Yes. Compan especially when you've been with somebody, but also too, I mean, there's a po component of it. It's like, well, if you're divorced, the companionship probably wasn't there <laughs> in your marriage for the last, how, you know, couple of years or year or something. Um, so it's just, it's realizing, well, first identifying like, yeah, what is it, is it that you're missing too? Um, Cause a lot of it, again, we are missing in our marriage too. And that's part of the reason why it failed too, but really focusing on what is it that you want and what is it that you want to bring? What is it that you want in the ne your next relationship, but also what do you want to bring to your next relationship? So I think even before you get into dating and worrying about dating, again, it goes back to really taking the time to work on yourself. And sometimes sitting in that can be uncomfortable because it's new and you're bored. <laughs> um, I, it's, you know, so going out with friends and things like that is fun, but eventually like the novelty wears off and you're like, okay, now what do I do? And it's, it's going to be uncomfortable, but really that's when you grow, you know, and sit with it and realize like what, going back to that original question, like, how do I want to live my best life now? Um, and so don't focus so much on dating. Focus on yourself would be my advice. Because then when you are ready to date, you know who you are, what your standards are, what you want to bring to the relationship, and then what you'll allow to bring, you know, that person to bring to you and then your children as well in that dynamic. So um, if you are dating just have fun, have conversation, or even like on the apps, you can text and everything. And maybe that'll like suffice for a little bit. Um, 
but really just work on yourself. So take that time to, you know, take that walk, do the journaling, join new community groups, find what you're interested in, especially now with the online world, there's so much to get into. Like you don't have to go back to school. I talked to some clients, you know, who weren't working, you know, and then now they're like, well, I have to go back to school. I have to get this degree after you do it. And you really don't, I mean, you can, but you can do certification classes online, um, you know, and that you're not sacrificing time away from your kids either. Do it at, you know, night when they're settling in. Um, and so it all, I don't know, for me, it all goes back to just, again, working on yourself. And then that way you won't be so, I think you'll enjoy life more. I found that I was, I started dating and I was like, I don't even want to waste my time dating right now. I want to work on me. I want to have fun with my friends and then I'll figure out dating later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, I think a lot of people confuse companionship with dating and it has to be in a relationship. Yeah. And in reality, it's, I mean, even personally, it's like friendships and connection that you're craving. And if you have that, you don't feel that need as much to date. That said, what you were saying earlier, if all your friends are married, uh, that can be like a disconnect too. And that can be frustrating and a drag. So it's now on you to like initiate these new friendships and connections that also that's uncomfortable and tricky. But like you said before, you have to you know, find or create this new tribe of people that you can have this companionship with. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay if your circle is small. I think you and I were chatting just before this and we're like, our circles keep dwindling because we know like who relates to us, who understands, who we want to let into kind of like our circle. Um, so it's okay if, even if you just have a few friends, but yeah, find that companionship within yourself and just friends. And then naturally it'll evolve into, into dating and you'll be better prepared to date too, because I think if you're too consumed or too worried about dating right off the get-go, you'll probably just be repeating old habits, old patterns. <laughs> We've yes. all, I've seen it. I've done it. <laughs> right, right. We've all done it. So what yep. do they call it? I don't know if it's trauma bonding, but yeah. it's uh, it's something familiar. That's for yep. sure. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Next question we have. How do you co-parent with a two and a half year old post an affair? It's tough to manage all the things. Yeah. Um... This one I can relate to. Um, again, I think I've said it in, you know, some of the, to response to some of the previous questions. Um, it's just swallowing that and kind of getting that affair out of your head and just show up as I'm the parent to this child and I need to start, you know, show up as my best self in order to create their best self. Um, and it's you, you know, kind of putting putting the differences aside, like again, work with a coach, which work with a counselor, have those conversations with your ex. Um, but you, yeah, it's tricky. I get there. I've been there. <laughs> um, so it, it is really just showing up, it, but again, it's, it's doing the work for yourself because, and that's, again, that's why I do what I do because it's so important because if you don't work on yourself, you are going to just show up and fester all those emotions and they're going to come out in your children. And the two and a half year old doesn't know what's going on. They're just going to see mommy or daddy upset. Um, and so it's so, so important to work on yourself so that you can handle these situations because yes, when you, you're always going to have that affair in the back of your mind. And the second your ex says something to you, you're gonna be like, well, you're the one who, you know, you had to go and do that. But it really, it doesn't solve anything. You know, you're divorced. What happened, happened. How are you going to move on? You know, and so I think that's if you can get in that mindset, like, okay, it happened. It's in the past. Keeping those thoughts is not going to serve me. It's certainly not going to serve my child who doesn't even know what's going on. So how can I just show up as my best self and really work on yourself? And eventually you realize like though that infidelity, that was, that was part of that person's problem. It's not your problem. That's something they need to work on. Yes, unfortunately, it probably, you know, played factor in the the divorce. Um, but that's something they have to work on. You know, if you can stay in that right mindset and take care of yourself mentally, physically, you know, all that, um, and just put that forward for you and your children, you'll be in a much better state and you know how to handle all the things. Yeah, again, I get I had three kids, I was working, handling this divorce. Um, and it's a lot it, and it continues to be a lot. I mean, co-parenting is hard <laughs> just because you're divorced doesn't mean it's going to get easy. So, but for me, again, it's 
um, working with clients and like just focusing on, you know, again, the, like what we were just talking about, those steps. How, what steps can I take today to keep moving forward? And if you just have that mindset every day, like, okay, yesterday was yesterday. What's today? What can I do? Um, or, and then if you can start identifying triggers too, like, okay, I know this is coming up or he might say this in response to something and having those, um, I work with Michelle Dempsey and we talk about emotional fallback plans. So it's like, okay, I know this is coming up. What's going to be my fallback plan so I don't get triggered, or at least I know how to come back from that trigger so that, again, I can show up as my best self, take care of my child, and move forward and move on. Yeah, it sounds like having that foundation of wellness, you know, it just if you're not really taking care of yourself, it's, it's like eating junk food. It's going to be much easier for that stuff yeah. to fester. Doesn't mean it's going away. Yeah. Where you'll have like these muscles, you know, physically yeah. and mentally that will help you push through it. Yeah. Well, and it's just like, if you're, and I'm not even saying, you know, you don't have to be a bodybuilder or go run marathons or anything like that. But just like you said, those small steps of get and it, even just if you know you're going to be at triggered be like I'm let's go take a walk I just need to breathe I need to move this energy around grab your kids let's go out and take a walk you know or if you can by yourself um but just those small things because it is it's like eating junk food what happens when we eat junk food we feel lazy we want to lay on the couch we watch Netflix okay and then we're tired we sleep and then we don't have energy to work out or move the next day and then we sit with our emotions and so when you can instead shift that and start working out and feeding your body proper, you know, healthy nutrition, you not only become stronger and healthier on the inside, but your mindset does too. And so you realize like when you eat healthier or move, you're like, I don't need the junk food. And then you also think, I don't need those negative thoughts. They don't, that's not who I am. Like I'm stronger than that, you know, and you start to build that confidence that helps you regulate maybe the negative stuff that is trying to come your way. You're like, I get it and you can address it and then move on. And you literally become stronger emotionally as well. Great place to end on. Lauren, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Can you let people know where they can find you? Yeah. Thanks for having me, Rob. Um, I am on Instagram at your divorce bestie. Uh, my website is your divorce So pretty much anywhere your divorce bestie. <laughs> yes, definitely check out Lauren and her story. She's given all kinds of great tips on things like nutrition. When you were just talking about the Oreos, that's when I was thinking that's I, I need to <laughs> be paying more attention to those things. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it.